My name is Luciano Bachmann. I'm in the physics department at the University of São Paulo. We are in our laboratory in optical dosimetry. Here we measure all parameters, optical parameters of UV sources, invisible sources, and we try to measure and to give for the end users an accurate value of spectral radiance, spectral power, power, energy, and so the end users to apply these sources can provide a good value, a good fluence calculation. So, for example, we have here an uh, integrating sphere who will measure the spectral power of LEDs, of lamps, of SIRS, and with this spectral power we can provide a correct measurement of the power that this LED, this lamp can emit. We have also a lot of instrumentation we can set up to measure different optical parameters. One example is these two spheres, we can measure the if you put a sample inside, we can measure the transmission and the reflectance, diffuse transmission, ref, uh, diffuse trans, uh, reflection, and with these experimental parameters, we can give, we can calculate the optical parameters as uh, absorption coefficient and scattering coefficient. Also, we have this laboratory a measurement of the solar UV radiation. With this parameter, we measure in real time the spectra that the sun emit and we can calculate UV index and other biological activity parameters that are important for us. The second laboratory is about optical diagnosis. In this laboratory we have Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, we have fluorescence spectroscopy, uh, real, um, for, uh, different techniques of fluorescence like uh, static spectroscopy, and the time resolver spectroscopy and we try with this technique, with, with these optical techniques, extract a lot of parameters and use these parameters as a biomarkers and with these biomarkers we can identify if this technique can, can be employed as an optical diagnosis system, optical diagnosis tools and, uh, and, 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 and evaluate if you can characterize tissue. We have different works. We, my, mainly we use dental tissues, colon tissues, or thyroid tissues, and extract different spectra and try to process in this data and to identify these biomarkers. Hello, my name is Kleber Thiago de Oliveira. I'm a professor at the Federal University of São Carlos and uh, I'm a coordinator of the synthesis team uh, of the CEPOF. Uh, since I was invited to be a part of the team uh, of the, the century, uh, Professor Bonato told us we need to think about uh, go beyond the borders of the science. So since that time, uh, joining the ideas of the biophotonics uh, team, we decided to, to think about outbox, outbox uh, and we decided to develop new photosensitizers and a new approaches for PDT activity. So the challenge was uh, why and when and what is the difference between our approach and the literature and the current literature approach. So we decided to, to think about two classes of photosensitizers, two main classes. Uh, namely, uh, we, think, we think about uh, photosensitizers like porphyrins and principal, uh, mainly the chlorine derivatives like uh, chlorophyll derivatives and also we think about the curcumin class of compounds. So the challenge is not to think about just in, in new um, modifications of the photosensitizers or on the synthesis of new photosensitizers but the challenge was to produce a number uh, of derivatives in large scale amounts. Uh, so we have developed the extraction of new chlorophyll derivatives uh, by using very simple materials, start materials, and we have derivatized a number of uh, derivatized the chlorophyll derivatives and uh, thus producing a number of new photosensitizer compounds with many PDT activities. And also we have developed the extraction of curcumin from plants and also the synthesis of the curcumin uh, in a synthetic way. So this is a, a, a very important part of the project because in this case we can produce large amounts of curcumin 
and uh, we can provide uh, too much photosensitizers for a number of tests, so a number of PDT tests. So we have developed assisted machine by using continuous flow chemistry, uh, and the curcumin was obtained in a very good way. In uh, 25 grams a day, we are able to produce nowadays 25 grams a day of curcumin. So that's the job we have developed in the century. We are working on the synthesis of new photosensitizers and now the challenges, how to provide it in, in large amounts and how to modify better the compounds uh, that we are working on. Okay, thank you. I'm a leader of the photosensitizer group at the Institute of Chemistry of São Carlos. Uh, our research group aims to contribute to the development and new and better photosensitizers for the photodynamic therapy. We have a collaboration with researchers who synthesize new molecules as well as improve the derivatives of already known photosensitizers. We study the photochemical properties of these molecules sensitive to light, their cytotoxicity, their intramolecular accumulation, aggregation, photostability, and the mechanism of cell death. We have studied some improved ways to deliver photosensitizers as the use of nanoparticles. We have also developed better models to study the photosensitizers effects as a human dermal equivalent, which is a three-dimensional cell culture, it's a 3D, using type one collagen as a support to promote cell proliferation and differentiation. These um, sponges made with collagen are used to grow cells on top of it. And also we are using a microfluidic platform or microchip in order to get a rapid and precise method for evaluation of effectiveness of PDT in a micro scale. The photosensitizers are tested in normal and tumor cells as well as in microorganisms, both in plankton culture as well as in biofilms, condition in which the majority of these pathogens are present in the host tissues, make it much more difficult to, fly, to fight them by, an, by any methodology. The most studied uh, photosensitizers in our group are Chlorines, phthalocyanines, and hypericin. Uh, my name is Ana Claudia Pavarina. I am a dentistry. I work as a professor and researcher at Araraquara Dental School, NESP Araraquara. My research group has developed studies with focus in antimicrobial photodynamic therapy. We have evaluated the efficiency of antimicrobial photodynamic therapy to inactivate microorganisms and for treatment of oral candidiasis. Oral candidiasis is the most common opportunist infection that occurs in oral cavity. Uh, in our uh, research group, different kinds of photosensitizers associated with lead light have been evaluated in in vitro studies in order to um, establish parameters uh, for uh, microbial photoinactivation. Then, in vivo studies have been performed in animal models of candidias and clinical trials. My name is Everton Garcia de Oliveira Mima. I work here at Araraquara Dental School, NESP, as a professor, uh, assistant professor. And when we observed uh, efficacy in vivo with the animal models, we try to uh, evaluate these uh, parameters in a clinical trial. So we select uh, patients that suffered from dentary stomatitis, that's a, a kind of oral candidiasis associated, associated with the use of dentures, and we treat not only the oral cavity of this patient, but also the dentures of these patients, since the denture acts as um, a source of infections, of, of infection of the mouth. So we have to treat not only the palate, but uh, but, al but also the, the the dentures of these patients with antimicrobial photodynamic therapy. My name is Alessandra Rastel. 
I'm from the Department of Restorative Dentistry at Araraquara School of Dentistry and I am the head of the Biophotonics and Bio-Nanomaterials Laboratory. The main focus of our lab is to develop the uh, techniques and technologies for the minimal invasive uh, treatment uh, in the oral cavity. In this way, we have uh, focused our research on antimicrobial photodynamic therapy to control the oral biofilms, mainly the biofilms responsible by the dental caries. Also, we have uh, uh, developed um, research uh, on uh, a new bleaching technique and also a new technique to improve uh, the uh, photopolymerization of uh, resin-based materials. My name is Lorenzo Esbraja, I'm a pediatric surgeon and professor from the University of São Paulo, the campus of Ribeirão Preto Medical School. And this is the, the lab dedicated all the time to liver transplantation problems. We have been dedicated last uh, 20 years in collaboration with a physics institute from São Carlos, campus São Carlos, from the University of São Paulo also. And we have been working with uh, this very important problem about the ischemia and reperfusion about the liver. Our, of our studies is focused on in the vitality of the, the hepatic tissue after reperfusion. We have many models that we have been applying ischemia and reperfusion about the liver. And uh, in association with São Carlos, we have been applying also uh, treatments using laser therapy and different sizes of uh, laser application. And uh, the results are very interesting because uh, many of this uh, translational uh, use for, for surgery, example, apply some uh, laser, laser therapy for uh, tissue before reperfusion uh, in different times of ischemia can protect of a reperfusion lesion. That we have been applying for a long time and we hope this collaboration can be more and more applied for human beings in, in order to keep the liver transplantation better and uh, get better results for, for a post-operative uh, liver transplantation surgery. My name is Ana Gabriela Salvio. I'm a dermatologist from the skin department of Maral Carvalho Hospital. The skin department of Amaral Carvalho Hospital has had a partnership with the Institute of Physics from São Carlos since 2008. Since then, we've been developing many different studies and rolling photodynamic therapy. Those researches comprise both clinical and experimental trials, always approved by the local ethics committee. More than 30 patients are attended here on a daily basis. Our patients come mostly from the area nearby, but also from all the states of Sao Paulo. If a malignant or a premalignant lesion is recognizing during the medical consultation, the patient can immediately receive the PDT treatment using a proper device. The partnership between an oncology hospital and a, and a university is very important once it provides updated treatment for the patients. My name is Deborah Milori. I am the coordinator of Optics and Photonics Laboratory of Embrap Instrumentation, which is a member of CPOF. Here we use photonics to characterize natural materials and aiming clean technologies, low cost and large scale measurements. Currently, the main issues that we are concerned with uh, are precision agriculture and environmental monitoring. Precision agriculture because it is a strategy to increase productivity and reduce losses in, on farming activities. Environmental monitoring, uh, in my, my opinion, is a big issue of the century. 
okay, uh, to evaluate uh, contamination of natural resources and uh, climate change is a theme very important for all the governments. Um, and the, the, one of the bottlenecks of precision agriculture and environmental monitoring are the sensors. We need to develop sensors to make it feasible this kind of mapping because nowadays the cost is very high. And our laboratory is working in this direction. We develop uh, some, some systems that I would like to show you. Um, here we have uh, classes with a filter that helps uh, people, uh, inspectors, to do visual inspection in citrus uh, crops. And uh, here we have a system uh, that uses optical spectroscopy that analyzes a leaf and it's possible to do an uh, early diagnosis of diseases. And uh, here I would like to show you a system where it's possible to evaluate the carbon in soil. We prepare a pellet like this and we evaluate the soil carbon and the chemical structure or stability of carbon in soil. Um, and these examples uh, is very important for us because uh, emphasize the importance of cooperation of MRAPA and CIPOF. Uh, we need this kind of cooperation not only for financial support but also because we have a, a very nice um, cooperation of professionals of different areas and I think this is a very uh, important we believe that agriculture and environment require a lot of sensors and optical sensors is a very nice strategy to do this kind of mapping and uh, for this reason uh, the cooperation between RAPA and CIPOF is so important and we need to continue. My name is Marcelo Becker, I'm a professor in the Mechanical Engineer Department of São Carlos School of Engineering. I'm part of CEPOF, one of the researchers, and my work here is to develop mobile robots that can go to the field and take the sensors that can measure things directly in the field without the need of taking samples and they are taking the samples to the labs and uh, to analyze the samples. So we are trying to take to the field sensors that can detect diseases, soil properties and other things. We work with big robots like this, this is an autonomous car, small scale robots and also with drones, I mean helicopters. Drones are very useful today, they are used in many different applications. In our case, when it comes to agricultural applications, we want to use the drones to detect uh, diseases. When it comes to the rover, we are using the rover to take the leaps. It's a laser sensor that can characterize the soil properties very fast and with uh, gel data. We are also developing drones that can land on the water and do some uh, inspection in power plants. But uh, the focus of our group at this moment is agricultural applications. With Embrapa and other researchers of CEPOF, we are working together to take the sensors to the field. I am Glauco Kaurin. I am a professor at the Aeronautics Department, Engineering School of São Carlos. Our Manipulation Laboratory Lab is a member of CEPOF. Uh, our contributions and research are focused on the collaboration between human and machine with impact in robotics rehabilitation, uh, new devices for the assessment of human behavior, data analysis using knowledge discovery in database methodology and also the development of uh, computer games for the topics uh, already mentioned. Uh, as a first example of our work, we have a robot that 
is used for uh, the rehabilitation of the wrist and um, this device is already robust and suitable for hospital environment and it offers a very simple and easy setup for the therapist. Uh, we are also extending this study that's originally uh, sought for stroke patients and we are extending it for brachial plexus injury and also spinal cord injury. As a second uh, example of our work, we developed and patented a new optronic sensor technology for uh, human upper limb motion assessment. This new sensor allows us uh, the acquisition of hand images during grasping, but at the same time we are able to uh, access hand grasping forces hand orientation, velocity, acceleration, induced by upper uh, arm motions. Um, this kind of uh, equipment, robots and sensor, produce a lot of information. We also develop a procedure for the acquisition, pre-processing, recording and also the analysis of all this data. We are using a knowledge discovery in database, for example, to verify if these new clinical procedures are better and are comparable with the classical old uh, clinical protocols. Um, finally, uh, we are developing uh, computer games uh, to motivate uh, people to interact with our robots and our devices. These computer games are uh, sought to work as a motivation uh, uh, system and in this case the robots act, uh, they assume the role as an intelligent joystick. Uh, the joystick may help the patient as needed and in other uh, situations they can also resist the patient movements. Thank you very much for visiting our lab uh, this time. My name is Professor Ben Hur Borges and I'm at the Department of Electrical Engineering in the University of Sao Paulo. I'm going to show you here what we've been doing in terms of research in metamaterials and diffractive optics structures. For the metamaterial structure, uh, what we've been doing in microwaves is the, only the design before, was well, only the design of this structure because we didn't have the chance to characterize these structures. But this changed since we started this collaboration with CPED because we were able to acquire equipment such as this one which is the os uh, oscilloscope, which has a bandwidth of 13 gigahertz, and also an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary wave generator. Well, what we have been able to do with this equipment is for the first time in this country to not only to design, but also to char experimentally characterize metamaterials, where we can actually uh, 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 control the dispersion of pro pulses propagating through these materials. So we were able, for the first time in this country, to compress pulses in time using the structure that we have designed here. On top of that, in terms of uh, uh, optical structures, we have been investigating uh, 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 diffractive optic structures, more specifically holograms, where for the first time also, we're able to, not only to design, but also to characterize a holographic structure using crystalline silicon. This is a first, not only in terms of this country, but also in the whole world. So what, what we expect to achieve with this is to be able to have high uh, uh, if, uh, diffractive of efficiency and also a much better quality for the image. This was uh, what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But this is how the, the actual hologram looks like in real life. So what you see here is because of the number of uh, phases that we have, we have a much better definition of the holograms. So that's why the efficiency of this hologram is much higher because you can see much more definition and also much more a brighter hologram as well.